Do bass cotton tournaments swim back home? And if they do, how soon and how many survive? A brand new study finally has the answers, and what they found might change the way you look at your lake forever. One new study published in August of 2025 by researchers at the University of Illinois looked into this. Let's dive into the results. So this is a peer-reviewed study, and what they wanted to look at was release rates, whether the fish swim back, what the mortality was, and if this was impacted by season. So they looked at it anywhere from May up through September, looking at cool water temperatures and warm water temperatures, comparing the return rates and the mortality based on the season. Now there's a few things that they noted in here. The first, I find this amazing, but they said there were over 40,000 tournaments per year, and that 80% of those are bass fishing tournaments. I know there's a lot, and these were from studies done a number of years ago. So if you look at now with especially high school fishing and collegiate fishing, when you take all the Tuesday nighters, the weekend events, charity events and stuff, there are tons of tournaments. And two things that you have to look at in tournaments, one is the mortality. Obviously, if some of the fish are dying when they're released, uh, especially in like these warmer season tournaments, you can affect the population that way. But the other thing is displacement. Uh, on some lakes, they take off from ramps all around the lake and they get released all over the place. On some lakes, like the one studied here, there's basically one primary tournament location. So by the end of the season, if all those fish are getting released in one spot, they're getting caught all over here and released right here, are you starting to stockpile a bunch of those in one area or do most of them return or does it take a little bit? So they really wanted to look at that displacement as much as the mortality. The lake they studied was Clinton Lake in central Illinois. It's about 5,000 acres, has a number of tournaments there, and the big feature of this one is most all of the tournaments, if not all of them, go out of a single marina in a single cove so you can really isolate and see how many fish were return returning or not. Now they took 69 bass, and these were tournament caught ones. They looked for ones that weren't struggling, the ones that looked like they were in good condition, and they studied them. They put acoustic radio transmitters in them, and these fish were pretty good sized bass. They averaged 17 and a half inches, so we're talking nice sized bass. And then they were able to track these with a acoustic tracking system. So the bass were tagged in six tournaments and they ranged from April through September. The water temperature varied from 58 degrees up to about 84 degrees. And they considered the April and May tournaments as early with the cooler water. And then the rest of the year were late tournaments. Now to set up a control, they electrofished bass in both May and September. So they had a population of early and late fish. They were electrofished, they were not put in live wells but they were released at the same release area as a tournament bass and they put the radio transmitters in them as well. I'll put up a lake map here and you can see where they put up the tracking stations. These transmitters, the normal ones, the radio trackers, the scientists have often used in the past, they would have to go around the lake and it basically put out a radio wave. They would have an antenna. They had to search all up and down the lake, try to locate where the fish was. But the fish that they were tracking in these older studies, basically that was just one point in time. They had to go out there daily or weekly. They would go and try to find the signal, get closer and closer until the signal got strong. And then you knew where that fish was, but that's where the fish was at that second. These more modern acoustic trackers, they actually put out a signal and then you have monitor stations that can monitor them all the time. And you see what they did here is they set up seven different stations. So they basically act as gates. The, you have one, one receiver here and one here and it's sending a, a signal across there. So basically within 200 meters there, they can hear the fish, locate the fish. So when the fish swim by, you're gonna get a signal. So you'll know when they pass these different thresholds and move to different parts of the lake versus the old school transmitters, that's one point in time. On this one, if that fish crosses a boundary, if it moves to a different part of the lake, it's gonna flag that, that uh, receiver and they're gonna be able to much more accurately track these. So we've seen some tracking studies in the past with the release bass, but this one's kind of ahead of the curve in the fact that you know instantly when they cross a threshold, so you get a really reliable idea of when these fish are moving. The blue and the red stars and circles, that's where the trackers were. And then you look at the just the white and black star, that's the marina. That's where the fish were released. And then you can see 
where they tracked him up and down the lake. Now the other thing they had in these transmitters is it also measured temperature so it could tell at what temperature the fish were residing so when they got released from one to the next they can see if they went to warmer or cooler water as well. Now they also did one more experiment to look at delayed mortality. Basically, they set up pens at the release area in June and September. They did two different ones, and they set up two different groups. One, the control group, were hatchery-raised fish. They took those fish, put them in the pen in the release area. They had another pen where they took fish that were released from the tournament, but not ones that had radio trackers, just released fish there. And then they compared those versus the hatchery ones to see what the release uh, delayed mortality was. So basically, did any fish die and they were held for three and a half days to see because sometimes fish look healthy when you release them but after a day or two they'll pass away so they they did these uh, delayed mortality test as well but those fish did not have radio trackers in them. When they looked at the results of that pen study the fish for delayed mortality in the early season tournament none of the control group fish or the tournament release fish none of those passed away. Now they did find two of them were really lethargic and they euthanized those so there was a little bit of, I guess you could call delayed mortality basically if it probably went one more day or something a couple were close to dying, but pretty low in both of those. Whereas when you look at the late season or the warmer weather, basically 9% of those fish in the tournament release group, 9% of those had delayed mortality. They died within three and a half days. Again, the hatchery fish, when they were in a pen, none of those died. So basically what you saw was more fish as the warmer increased, obviously holding them in tournament live wells, you were going to have some delayed mortality. Uh, some studies, you know, they'll show like 70% rates and stuff. Now this water isn't like southern lakes where sometimes you have 90 degree water, but definitely they saw what's seen in so many tournaments as the water temps increase when you keep them in live wells and that warmer water, there is some delayed mortality. So they did see that. All right, so let's dive into the tracking part though. Did these fish return? Now keep in mind, I'll throw that map up again quick, they released in the marina here. And they didn't keep track of where these fish were initially caught, so they weren't sure. Now the marina itself, I'm assuming, was probably off limits, it usually is. So you can assume most of the fish were caught in the other part of the lake, but they didn't know exactly where these fish were caught. But they looked at a few different things. The first thing they looked at was did they leave the release site? So this cove itself, where the marina was, how long did it take them to leave that and return at least to the main lake to get out of there? And it varied by the season. So overall, it took six days on average for fish to leave, but it was fairly variable. That was a plus or minus or standard deviation of about seven days. Some of the fish took up to 34 days to just leave the release cove. Uh, it varied by season though. So in the cooler months, it took them on average about four and a half days to return. And that had a deviation of about eight days. Whereas in the warmer water, in the warmer months, they left on average of seven days. So in the, the cooler months, it seemed like they, maybe they were recovering quicker. They were leaving that and returning to the main lake, getting out of that cove in about four and a half days. Warmer months, it took them about seven days on average to get out of there. That was the average days to return to the main lake. Did some of them stay there? Well, in the early season tournaments, those April and May, all of the fish left the cove. All of them went out. In the warmer months, though, from June through September, about 13% of those fish, they never left the cove. They stayed in there, so they took longer to return, and some of them never even left. Then the next thing they looked at was basically those fish, once they swam out of the marina cove, did they stay close by? Did they get stockpiled near that cove on the main lake? Or did they spread out and swim a long ways? And basically, somewhere between 25 and 50% of the fish that were released that swam out stayed within 2,000 feet of the entrance of that marina cove. So somewhere between a quarter and a half of all those fish are staying 2,000 feet, not that much. Uh, they're staying within that release area. So they're definitely stockpiling. And what really drives this home is the fact that they noted that there's a, a pretty considerable, what seems to be migration on this lake. 
of all the fish they monitored in the early season in the cooler water months, 80% of those fish were on the east arm of the lake. And then in the later months, those warmer months, 50 to 75% of them were on the west arm. So basically, they there's an inflow and an outflow on this lake. They assume that there must be some sort of a bass migration where a lot of those fish move from the east arm to the west arm in the warmer months. Well, this really drives home the fact that those fish, 25 to 50% of them, the released ones, they're staying within 2,000 feet of the takeoff area of the release area. And the other thing to note, like we said, there's basically one marina where all the tournaments go out of here. Some places, if there's, you know, lakes that have a lot of release sites, well, they, you know, there's not a big population that gets kind of stockpiled there. At this lake, if almost all the tournaments, and it's a pretty busy tournament lake, if all of them are going out of one area and those fish are staying close, you have to think they're really starting to gang up on those key features, the structure and the habitat around there. It's not like there's no other fish. By the end of the season, there's fish after fish. All those tournament fish, release fish, 25 to 50% of them are staying within a thousand feet of either side of the takeoff area there. And they're really getting grouped up pretty considerably right around takeoff. Another thing that they were able to measure was the mortality of these fish with the radio transmis transmitters. Basically, if they didn't get any soundings, if the fish stopped moving, they pretty much assumed that the fish had died. It wasn't moving anymore at all. After a number of days, if it hadn't moved, they assumed that it died. Now, the fish in the early season, the April and May, basically none of those uh, died. The control group, none, and only one fish uh, of the tournament uh, con tournament release group, one of those died, so very low. Now, during the warmer months, uh, they had about a 20% death rate of the ones implanted with the transmitter that were caught in a tournament. And they kind of said that, well, there's a 12% higher mortality rate from warm weather tournaments. I would disagree with this conclusion a bit because they also had a 15% mortality rate of the control group fish. Those were ones that were electrofished and they weren't held in a tournament uh, live well, but they did get the radio transmitter in the belly as well. So basically control group 15%, uh, tournament group, 20%, yeah, a few more, but I mean, you're talking one or two fish additionally died. To me, it shows obviously uh, one, the, the surgery, because the control group, obviously the surgery was having some impact on these fish. And then secondly, uh, none of those were dying in the cooler water. So it kind of goes to show just reinforces warmer water, higher stress on the fish either way. And one more thing they looked at, remember that transmitter, it had a biologger as well. It checked check for temperature and the one thing they noted that in the six hours where they monitored that right after the release is a lot of the fish went to cooler water so whether they were just trying to get deeper and seek the safety of deep water or they wanted the cooler temperature on a lot of them went to about two degrees celsius or about three and a half degrees fahrenheit cooler water so it does seem like for recovery uh, whether it's a lower metabolism or more oxygen rich, but that cooler temperature seemed like that was something that a lot of the bass after the release sought out. The researchers were quick to point out too on these mortality rates that they tried to pick out big healthy bass, the ones that looked like they were fresh and in good shape when they put the transmitters in or tested them. So the fact that there was considerable mortality during the warmer weather months that's taken out the probably the best case scenario fish. If you take ones that weren't, you know, were already kind of struggling and stuff, you'd probably see higher mortality. So definitely pretty clear here again that warmer weather, warmer water, higher mortality. The pretty clear conclusion of this study though was the fact that there was a lot of stockpiling going on. And remember, some of those fish were staying in the Marina Cove in the warm weather months, you know, 12, 13% weren't even leaving. It was taking them up to 34 days. You know, most of them a week or so they were hanging around, but a quarter to 50% of these fish were staying close. So a couple of implications. One is bass fishermen, you know, you can debate whether it's good or bad or whatever, but it definitely happens. Areas that have a lot of tournaments, if you have a Tuesday nighter going on all the time, if every Saturday there's a tournament going out of there, well, you can probably guess that there's going to be a lot of fish there, especially by the end of the season that gets stockpiled. 
Now, they noted here in this study that this is on a particular lake, and it could vary from lake to lake. It gives you kind of a baseline. They need to do more studies on different types of lakes, different types of reservoirs to see the impact. But on this particular one, on Clinton Lake, it showed pretty clearly, in this case, they stockpile. So if you're a bass fisherman, areas, and this is always known, they call them retreads or recycled fish, areas that have a lot of tournaments around there, there's probably a pretty big uh, stocking program going on. And we're not talking right there at the ramp where they release them, but even if they take the release boat out to the main lake, take it a quarter of a mile out there, within a half mile or so of a release area, probably one of the areas that are gonna have a lot of fish around it. And then the second impact is for fisheries managers and tournament organizations. Knowing this, that there's a lot of this recycling, a lot of them do a good job instead of just releasing in the cove. And you remember these fish like that cooler water, a lot of them take them out to the main lake. They'll have release boats instead of you know small ones, they just turn them loose right there at the ramp. Bigger organizations, bigger, more professional tournaments will take the fish out to the main lake and uh, release them so they're already out there a ways. But if you can vary the location where you have tournaments, mix that up, uh, force people to use different ramps so you're not consolidating all the fish in one area, or if it's a smaller lake, if those release boats, if you take these to different parts of the lake, if that's feasible, you're gonna help even out those fish instead of stockpiling right, right there. And it may be good for us as fishermen if they're stockpiled, but also remember, you know, the food is probably not stockpiled there. If the habitat and the food is spread throughout the lake and all these bass are getting stockpiled in one area, there's gonna be a lot of competition. They're probably gonna not uh, grow as well. There's not as much food for them. They're all competing for that limited resource. So probably evenly distributing them is gonna be better in the long run. And finally, the researchers mentioned it again, and it's really starting to change the dynamic. I mean, all of us came up fishing tournaments, stringer tournaments, it, it used to be people kept them, that was before my time, but then that evolved to catch and release. That was a huge change, uh, much for the better in the tournaments. What we're looking at now are catch way release right there in the boat. You know, kayak tournaments, they take pictures on a, uh, on a ruler there, uh, organizations like Major League Fishing, they have it set up now and they have new technology basically with with your phone and with scales that communicate you know, with the phone, you can instantly weigh those fish, return them right away. I think every study that comes out, it's pretty clear if you can set those tournaments up and you can do it, a lot of people love that weigh in, that format. It's the drama of coming in there and showing off the fish. It's pretty cool, I've done it myself, I enjoy it. But for the sake of the fishery, I think the evidence keeps mounting that it's definitely better for the fishery to weigh them in the boat, release them instantly, get those fish right back, less mortality, less relocating them and stockpiling them. If you can, I think that science is pretty clear, releasing them in the boat's the way to go. You know, there's been a lot of other studies. Should you leave the hooks in or remove them? Should you uh, put ice in your live well? Does pouring Mountain Dew on a bass help with release when they're bleeding? Or check out my full science playlist. I dive into these and other studies, help you catch more bass, 